Oh yeah, we got through it. Oh, we just hit the top of the basket. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today we are at stop number two in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We will be taking on East Swiney Disc Golf Course. We will be enjoying some beautiful fall colors as well as a lot of water hazards. So get comfortable, stay for a while, and let's go toss some plastic. And we've made it to hole one at Swiney East Disc Golf Course in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And we're starting off with a very nice and simple 250 foot dead straight shot. The basket is located to the left of that big statue up there and I'm almost confident that I'm about to hit that statue. I'm really excited to get this round going. We're starting with the Envy. Oh, oh I nailed it. Oh, I crushed it. Dang. I want to give a big apology to Mr. Cole David Foster over there. I feel like we just cursed ourselves. And being that this is a water course, that is not ideal. But we still have about 55 foot big hyzer putt around Mr. Foster. Oh, nice Ron. For the three. Hole two, 250 feet. We want to hold a slight ante the whole way, and the ceiling is pretty low here, and running down the entire right side is a river, so the water hazards have begun. We are going to go with our Envy again. Keep going, keep going. All right, we're a little deep, but we should have a putt. Nice shot there. We've left ourselves about 16 feet for the two. Hole three, and it's time to wake up. We have 400 feet dead straight with 300 feet of water clearance. You can bail out and take this big hyzer out, but of course, guys, we are going to go for it with our champion boss. All right, we caught a tree, but we did make it over. Not our best shot. This is a hole that I would love to have back. We still have about 90 feet for the two. I'm just gonna go with a soft hammer toss. All right, nice and simple. For the three. So when I got to Indiana, I did have some cans in Greta, so I sat there and Googled if Indiana has the bottle return like Michigan does. And the response was, it listed off the states that have it, and then it said, obviously Indiana is not one of them. <laughs> like, what? I've never felt so attacked by a Google search. I mean, it just, it, it made me feel stupid. I'll come out and say it. It just made me feel stupid. And it, you know, you just, you get taken back by something like that. Just out of nowhere, Google's just coming at me. Hole four, 380 feet. You have a dead straight lane and a bit of a hyzer lane. The ceiling is pretty low. So we are gonna take the hyzer lane and hopefully we get a decent skip to help push our way up there. We are going with our Proto Firestorm. Oh yeah, skip up there. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness, we almost skipped in. That would have hands down been the longest ace I've ever had. Oh, it's not very often my heart gets pumping like that, but I think that was really close. Let's go find out. Definitely no ace run from the tee pad. It did look like that we were all the way up here, but we are about 12 feet short, but nonetheless, very good shot. Hole five, 255 feet dead straight to an elevated basket. So if we do give this a good run, we're probably gonna have a long comeback putt for our birdie, but we are gonna full send it with our Envy because I don't think the Rhino has a chance to get that far that high in the air, but it would be the perfect play safe for a birdie shot. Fight back. Oh, not a good throw at all, but let's see what we can do. We are pin high. I do wish we would have had a little more of a run than that. And this sun is just 
burning my retinas out right now, but it looks like we have about 22 feet to the slightly elevated basket for the two. Nice pot. I'm feeling good today. Let's keep that momentum and let's just have a good round. Hole six, 210 feet, absolute meat hook right with water running down this right hand side so we can't go too far. I'm gonna try a sidearm skip shot. I'm definitely not the best at those, but that is the only way that we're gonna make it to this pin. There is this little inside dead straight lane, but I don't really know what's going on in there. So we're just gonna play it safe with our splice. Oh, not good. Not the best tee shot, but at least we got on the inside of this wall of trees. So it does give us an outside chance to catch the two. It is a long one though, probably 70, 75 feet, slight ante putt the whole way. Oh, not great. Not great at all. For the three. Yesterday evening when I needed a break from the computer, I went for a late night walk in the park. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen a branch like this, but you notice why this one's missing. I stepped on it. It went through the sole of my shoe into my foot. I could not take my shoe off because it was just ripping it in the bottom of it. I know that might be gruesome, but who would have thought this little piece of a branch all the way through the sole. Unbelievable. Hole seven, 390 feet. It looks like it's tucked way up there and off to the right a bit. I have no idea where the basket is, so we are just gonna kind of play it safe and just aim at that brightly beautiful lit up red tree down there. We're going with our champion boss. Oh boy. That was so bad. I clipped one of these really tiny trees up there and it just immediately forced the disc over to the left. We are definitely gonna have to work for it now. We did hyzer out pretty quickly, but thankfully we did get far enough up the fairway to be able to see the pin because it is tucked back in there pretty far. It has left us about 200 feet still. We are gonna go with the champion rhino because I don't want anything to go too deep in the water or overturn into the woods. All right, just like we wanted. Nice three save. Hole eight, 395 feet, dead straight. It is a bit of a tunnel shot because we do have lines of trees on the left and right and trying to go through any of those gaps could result in a very unsatisfying tee shot. So we are gonna go right up the gut with our champion boss. <sighs> Threw that way too high way too high not terrible but a horrible release when the champion boss gets tombstoned that's when you know that you just threw a really bad shot we still have probably 80 feet putt with two guardian trees up there very tricky with the river right behind it not a bad run nice and easy three Hole nine, 255 feet. We have this very tight window that we have to hit off the tee pad. It is basically dead straight with the left finish. We are gonna go with our Envy. All right, should be a putt. For the two. Hole nine break, and today I'm gonna to tell you guys a little bit about what's been going on here at Tossing Plastic. As you guys know, lately with today being the exception, it has been very gloomy in Michigan and Indiana, rendering my solar absolutely useless. So I found myself sitting in Barnes and Nobles day after day for very long periods of time. And let me tell you guys, you see some interesting things when you sit there for eight hours. The magazine section is located right by the cafe and let me tell you guys elderly people love their magazines but not one of them actually buys any they all just come as soon as Barnes & Noble opens they grab like four or five of them sit down get a water from the cafe and just read them all day 
About two hours into my editing session and trying to get all my electronics charged, I think they looked at me like a threat. You know what I mean? Like I was on their turf and this is their section of the cafe that they hold down day after day. But let me tell you something, I am stubborn. I was not about to leave. There was a lot of eye contact going on and I knew immediately we were in this for the long run and the first person to get up loses. I knew things really took a turn when one of them leaned over and he looked at me and he said, you from around here? And I said, no, I'm actually from Michigan. He said, okay, called his phone. He said, honey, I'm gonna be late for supper. And let me tell you something, if you're in a competition with somebody who uses the word supper, you are way out of your league. You know what I mean? You are way out of your league and it's time to get out of Dodge. About seven hours in, he did get up and I said, sir, are you finally heading home for supper? And he said, nope, looked me right in the eye. He said, I'm just getting another cup of coffee. So at that point, I had to concede. I'm sorry, Michiganders, I did let you down, but I did my best, okay? I did my best. Hole 10, 330 feet, dead straight. You do have a little room out to the right to get a little turn on something. So we are gonna go with our birdie strike. Fight back, fight back, get up there. I'm not sure how much that branch slowed us down, but hopefully we have a putt. The strike did fight its way up here quite a bit, which I'm very happy with. We have left ourselves probably about 23 feet for the two. No, oh, just got in my head. Hole 11, 385 feet. We do want to hold a slight ante the entire way, but we don't want anything too flippy because again, guys, on most of these holes, there is water running along the right side here. So we are going to go with the arc. I don't think I'll be able to get 385 with it, but it should leave us in a decent spot. I really hope I didn't overturn that. All right, let's try to find it. So we have found the orc and my goodness, guys, we could have been in such a worse situation here. I definitely should have went a little more stable there. We did get about pin high. We're still about 65 feet out though. We have a big pressure putt because someone just pulled up in a car, parked and is staring right at us. You'd love to see it. Give him a show. Oh, good run. Hole 12, 285 feet. I know it's a weird camera angle, but this hole is very pinched off. It is cool though that they have one tucked over here off to the side in the woods. And this is a super tunnel shot off the tee pad. We are gonna go with the hex. And honestly, I'd be happy just to get out past these four trees. Oh yeah, we got through it. Oh, we just hit the top of the basket. Oh my goodness. Oh, that would have been so cool. Dang. And here's a look at that tee shot, guys. Normally I don't show you, but I'm very proud of that shot. That is a super tight tunnel shot. And we were this close, this close. As you guys know, you hate to see it, but you love to see it. Hole 13, 385 feet, dead straight. We do have kind of a low ceiling again, very similar to that shot a while back in the video. So we are gonna go with our firestorm and try to play for a nice little skip. All right, great shot, but we did release it a little early. So we hit that left lane instead of the right. It's gonna be a long one. So we did end up a little short and way left. We have left ourselves probably a 65 foot, 70 footer for the two. Oh my goodness. I knew I was gonna hit that branch. For the three. Hole 15, 235 feet, dead straight. There is about 98 trees in the way. I don't even think you could go with a big hyzer if you wanted to. So we are gonna throw a low burner right up the middle with the rhino. All right, nice. I think we got through them all. 
I'll be honest guys, I'm really surprised we made it through all of that. Catching this mulch did help a ton. It gave us a good amount of ground play, leaving us about a 10 footer for the two. All right, just a funny little behind the scenes thing. So I often spend a lot of time looking for my disc because with the tracers, I usually cannot move after I let the disc go, where normally, you know, you'd kind of walk off the tee pad to follow it with your eyes. I have to just stand there and clench my fists and hope that it's not somewhere in the woods. So just a funny little thing for you guys to know. Hole 16, 275 feet dead straight, slightly uphill. It is officially a sun's out, guns out situation. We are very excited for that here at Tossing Plastic. It's actually supposed to get to 80 today. So I'm super pumped. We are going with the hex. Man, I have been overturning that hex over and over and over again. It's really starting to get under my skin. It's definitely me, not the hex. I keep throwing it a little too flat and with a little too much spin, but we have left ourselves another 60 footer uphill for the two. Oh, good run. Hole 17, 200 feet, dead straight with a huge drop off right behind the basket into the river. Pretty scary shot. So of course we are gonna go with the Rhino to try to hone in our distance control. Oh boy, where is that? I am not gonna lie guys, I ran up here as fast as I could. I was so nervous that we overturned that rhino right into the water. Luckily we are safe with it. We have this very finicky, probably 45 foot ante putt for the two. And I don't know if you guys can hear the train just roaring past right now, but hopefully we can knock this one down. Let's go! What a putt! Are you kidding me? Let's go! That was so beautiful, and we went for it even with the big drop off. Let's go, guys. And rounding off Swiney East Disc Golf Course, we have hole 18. There is two different pins, 550 and 695. I'm not sure if they're both permanently in or they rotate them, but I'm just gonna throw my tee shot and then from there we'll figure out which one we're going to. And we are gonna go with the firestorm. If you hyzer out too early, you will end up right in the pond. All right, we got a lot of distance on that, so let's figure out where we're going. Very happy with this drive. Lately, the firestorm has just been clicking a lot better with me. I think my power off the tee pad has increased a bit, which does suit the firestorm a lot more. It looks like the long pin is in play, so we are gonna go for it with the hex. Oh, this footing is so bad. Ay, ay, ay. I really wanted to get closer and get this in a three, but dang it. Really poor approach shot. You hate to see it. We still do have an outside chance at an awesome three here. This footing is really bad. It looks like they just chopped all this stuff down, but all the roots are sticking up. So, ha. Oh. Hair. So we still do have to work for it quite a bit, probably about 70 feet for the three. Oh, dang. Why do we always end on a almost make? And that wraps up today's video at Swiney East Disc Golf Course in Fort Wayne, Michigan. And overall guys, I had a very pleasant experience. Now I will say right off the bat, as you guys saw, it is pretty easy to lose a disc here. And with this kind of water, if it goes in there, you're probably not gonna find it. 
This definitely is your standard city style park. It is pretty open, but you do have to hit your lines. It's not just simple point and throw. It does have quite a few longer holes, which in my opinion is a bonus. You do not see that too often at city parks. The baskets are old and they are rusty, but honestly, I'm not too picky about baskets. I know a lot of people out there are, but as long as it can catch a disc, I'm okay with that. Yes, it can be frustrating with those older single chain style. A lot of discs will spit out, but at the end of the day, I just don't put too much weight on it. The T pads are in good shape. The T signs are in good shape. So overall, I'm very happy with that. You don't need a ton of shot shapes to play here, but the course does offer you to take a few different lanes per hole, which is really nice and can help its replayability. From my experience, this place is very well maintained and Swiney West Disc Golf Course is just two minutes down the road that way, which makes this even better. You can come to one location and play two pretty good courses. With all of that being said, I will give Swiney East the solid rating of 7.4 out of 10. I don't know if this course is for everybody with all the water hazards, but I did have a good time and I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Now it's your turn to go talk. Awesome plastic.